So Go 1.23 has a new module called the Unique Module and it has been around for some time now, but it's now officially integrated into Golang. This unique module gives you a huge performance boost when it comes to performance critical comparisons and it allows you to canonicalize your data. In this video, we will evaluate this specific module by benchmarking some code and comparing them. And obviously you should not always apply this module in your code and I will tell you in this video why this is the case. So what's actually the unique package and what's the purpose of it? It is basically just performance because it improves efficiency by using these unique instances instead of comparing the original values. And this unique module makes use of a so-called handle, which is basically a unique identity which you can use to compare these instances with each other. So when would you actually use this package? Whenever you basically do a lot of comparisons in your code and when it comes to really high performance critical benchmarks or code. And also when you want to canonicalize your values, which is especially important for consistency or deduplication. Now I've already talked about this weird word, which is canonicalization. And this term basically refers to the process of creating unique representations of data that we want to compare. And we use this kind of concept to basically manage the memory efficiently, but also to ensure that the identical values values are represented by the same object in the memory. You will actually see what I mean here in a minute. Okay, so to basically use the benchmark in Golang, we can make use of the testing package itself. Now for that, we don't need the main.go file. We actually need the main underscore test.go file. So I'm going to create a new file here. And then I'm going to declare the package and then we can make use of the testing module and then actually run this specific file by using the test command. Right, so let's get going with declaring actually two variables that we call s1 and we just insert a really, really long string here. And then we copy this and just create another one, which we name s2. And obviously these two variables are the same. But now let's just create two benchmarks, which actually makes use of the default comparison. So we basically define the default comparison here. And the second benchmark is by using the unique module to actually see the performance difference when comparing these two strings here. So let's get started by just declaring a new function and we call that benchmark string comparison and we make use of testing.b. Right, and in this function, we actually iterate over b.n, which basically is just the amount of kind of iterations for the specific benchmarks. So the amount of executions for this benchmark. And then we say i++, and in here, we just compare these two strings, right? So we say underscore is equal to s1 is equal to double equal to s2. And what we actually do here is just execute this comparison and we do not save it anywhere, right? So here we do not make use of the result of this comparison. We just want to benchmark this specific comparison here. So let's just copy this function and then we call it benchmark unique handle comparison. So we do the same thing, but instead of comparing the two strings, we just declare two handles by using the unique module. And then we say make, and this make function just takes in a value, which basically returns in the end a handle. And here we say S1. And really the unique module only has the make function and the handle struct itself, which kind of declares a handle for this unique package, right? So in the end, H1 is now a handle. So let's do the same thing with h2. And now with these two declarations, we now canonicalize our s1 and s2. And basically they are now kind of the same identity, right? Because in the end, the values are the same and therefore the variables are also the same, All right? Let's just compare these two handles here. Let's save that and then we can execute this specific benchmark test. So it is also really important to know that these handles are only equal if basically the values we pass in to the make function are the same. 
right? So because S1 and S2 are the same, the handles are also the same. Now internally, the unique module has a global concurrent safe cache of all the added values, which in the end guarantees the uniqueness and efficiency of the handles, right? I think that should be relatively clear. So I've just noticed that I misspelled comparison here, so let's fix that. And then we can run the benchmark by executing go test dash bench is equal to dot. And all this does, it basically gets the system information and then it executes the benchmarks we've actually declared with the testing.b struct in this case. And then we can actually see how long it takes to kind of execute an operation for this benchmark. Right? And we can see that actually using unique handles is a lot faster than just using the default comparison. So you can actually see the benefit right here. So let's quickly make one more example to make things even more clear by declaring two structs. So let's just say we have a simple struct, let's call it struct A, which contains content, which is a string. And then we also have a struct B basically has the same fields, right? And then we declare two variables and the one is of type struct A, right? Where the content is again this string. And the second struct is just of type struct B. So in the end, they are kind of the same, all right? And in the end, we just want to compare the content. So it's basically the same kind of thing, but in this case, we only use a struct, right? And this also works. So obviously we need to create handles based off the content here. And if we run this again, the benchmark, it actually should work and we should see that the unique handle is much faster than the default comparison. But we can also do the same thing with just using one struct, right? So we can just get rid of struct B here and declare S2 as struct A as well. And then we compare the two different structs directly. Right, so this can be really efficient if you want to compare two different but relatively big structs with each other. So if we run this code again, we will see that again, the unique handle comparison is much faster than the default comparison. So keep that in mind whenever you want to kind of compare two different structs with each other to kind of just create the unique handles for that and then you have a much faster algorithm. All right, so let's quickly go to our main.go file. And now we will actually make use of a real world example to actually demonstrate again, the used memory footprint of these kind of handles in this case. So for that, let's just maybe create some kind of string slice, right? Called STRS. And then we actually want to add 10,000 elements to the slice, right? So we iterate here, 100,000 times in this case, not 10,000 times. And then we just append to the slice an example string. Now this obviously can be really inefficient because we can declare the size by using just the make function for instance, right? But I'm just keeping this example here relatively naive. So then let's just create a function called get used memory, right? And I've used this function before in a, another go 1.23 video. But all we do here is just basically kind of save or we want to save the memory statistics for the currently run algorithm, right? Then we kind of enforce the garbage collection, which basically in the end reclaims unnecessary memory or unused memory. And then we just save the statistics inside of M for this running application. And in the end, we just return the heap size here or the allocated heap objects in bytes. I will just make a new video about this specific function only because it's, I think, really important when it comes to testing applications or testing different algorithms. All right, I just kind of refactored the i here to an underscore because we're not really using the i in this case. And then let's just kind of have here a before memory variable that just makes use of the get used mem function. Right, so now before memory actually has the number of bytes before actually using the unique handles. And then we just simply print the bytes here. So before actually using the unique handles, we just print the bytes here. And now we use unique handles. So all we do is basically to declare a slice of unique.handle. 
And then we define the type for the handle, for the value of the handle as a string. And you might, by the way, wonder how you can get the value of a handle, right? If you want to really retrieve the value of a handle, you can, for instance, just say dot value. So let's just remove the slice here quickly to demonstrate this. We can just say handles.value and this returns the original value of the handle itself. Let's get rid of this and make this a slice again. And then we are iterating over our save strings and then we create a unique handle, a unique identity of the string, which enables the canonicalization. And then we just say handles is equal to append handles and then handle. And then we basically make use of this code here again. We declare the after memory usage and then we want to print the after memory. And obviously this will be much more efficient, right? And the reason is that these handles are actually all the same in the end, because what we've done is we've just appended an example 100,000 times to the same slice. Right? And the values of the slice, so all the values in this slice are actually just the same. And therefore all the handles are the same. So instead of saving multiple versions or multiple copies of the same value, it just stores one canonicalized version of the string and then it references this unique handle to wherever it is needed. Right? And therefore here we actually use much less memory. Now this is obviously much more efficient, like I said, and it can actually improve performance critical code. So let's quickly run this code here and we can actually see the huge difference here. So we can see the difference here where the bytes used before using the unique handles was quite high. And after using the unique handles, the use bytes was quite low, right? So we've reduced here the use bytes by a lot. Now, just because they are quite efficient compared to default comparisons, it does not automatically mean that you should use these unique handles everywhere, right? Obviously, the default comparisons are really fast for really simple comparisons compared to the unique handles. So they should be still really sufficient in most cases. And obviously, using default comparisons is also much more readable than using these unique handles. Because obviously you have to redeclare a lot of handles and it just gives you a lot of overhead in the end. But still it's quite good to use these unique handles for performance critical code. So I think in the end the unique module can be really powerful when used correctly. If that all sounds relatively new to you then I highly recommend watching this video here where I just quickly show you in 50 minutes everything you have to know about Golang. Anyway thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day and bye bye.